Hi there, welcome to another video from me, Mr. Arnold, and this is for Heavily Mats. Um, this video we're going to look at SIRDS, and this is part of the Core Mats course. So a quick revision on um, some of the aspects we'll need to know about SIRDS. So, first of all, um, SIRDS are irrational numbers. Now, if you're not sure what an irrational number is, it's a number that we cannot write exactly as a fraction. One of the most classic irrational numbers you may be aware of is pi. Pi can actually not, cannot be written exactly as a fraction. And some thirds that can't be written as fractions um, would be things like root 2 and uh, root 5. And there's, there's an infinite amount of thirds that um, we could find. But we're going to start out by looking at simplifying. So um, let's have a look at this first example here. I want to simplify this third. So I can actually write this in another form, a little bit like simplifying a fraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the number... Um, 20 underneath and I'm going to say to myself, right, is there a, a number, are, are there two numbers I can multiply together to make 20 and one of those numbers is going to be a square number. So in other words, I can say that root 20 is the same as root 4 times 5 because 4 times 5 is 20 and this is very important because I can write 20 as 4 times 5 and there's, uh, there's this um, rule, so we'll put this note here that the third of a product is equal to the product of the two thirds. And that's very, very useful. So I can say that root 4 times 5 is the same as root 4 times root 5. Let's uh, do that again. Root 4 times root 5. And we all know what root 4 is. Square root 4 is 2. So this is just the same as 2 lots of root 5. And that's the first one done. Let's have a look at another example. So we've got root 12 over 2. And we're going to use another little feature here. Uh, if the third of a product is equal to the product of the thirds, well, it actually follows then that also the third of a quotient is equal to the quotient of the thirds. So, root 12, can I write that in another way? Can I think of two numbers that multiply together to make 12? And one of them is going to be a square number. And I'm thinking 4 times 3 will do nicely. So that's equal to root 4 times 3 over 2, which is going to equal root 4 times root 3 all over 2. And root 4 is 2. So we get 2 root 3 over 2. And then the last part is, well, I can divide the top and bottom by 2 so I end up getting that the answer is simply just root 3 okay last example for simplifying thirds root 27 so let's think of two numbers that multiply together to make 27 and one of them is a square number 9 and 3 will do nicely and then we're going to have two lots of Two numbers that multiply together to make 45. One of them's got to be a square number. 9 times 5. And then root 12. Well, we've already done that. That's 4 times 3. <clears throat> okay, so root 9 times 3 is simply going to be 3 lots of root 3. And here, this is going to be 2 times, and it's root 9 times, uh, root of 9 times 5 is the same as 3 root 5 plus 2 root 3 and let's just expand out this bracket here so I've got two lots of 3 root 5 which is simply 6 root 5 plus the 2 root 3 and then let's tidy this all up. So collecting your like terms together like you would with algebra. 3 lots of root 3 and 2 lots of root 3 is 5 root 3 plus 6 root 5. And we can't simplify that any further. 
So that's just a quick recap on simplifying certs. If you want a more in-depth tutorial, do check out the GCSE ones. Okay, um, rationalizing the denominator, and this skill is absolutely crucial, so you gotta make sure that you can do this for your exam. So uh, the problem here is I've got an irrational number in the denominator, and I wanna get rid of that. So we're gonna do a thing called rationalizing the denominator. And all I have to do is look at the bottom here. If, if I was to multiply root five by something, so that it, it didn't have a square root anymore. Um, one way of doing it, I, I wanna get rid of this. So if I multiply by say root five on the bottom, uh, root five times root five will be five. But what I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. Essentially what I'm doing here is I'm just multiplying one over root five by one, because root five over root five is one. And when I multiply by one, I'm not actually changing it. So it will it will look different, but it's it's still the same thing. So let's do um, one times root five is root five. That's half a wonky. Let's try that again. Root five, and then root five times root five is root five squared, or simply just five. So that's the first example done. Root five over five. Let's have a look at the second example, a little bit more involved here. Okay, um, we've got root 175. So I have three lots of, and root 175, so two numbers that multiply together to make 175, one of them's got to be a square number. So I'm thinking 25 times 7 will do nicely. And then we've got two root and 27, I'm thinking nine times three, so square number, and it's not a square number there. Okay, so three root 25 uh, times seven is gonna be three times five root seven over two times three root three. And let's just expand this out so we get three times five is 15 root seven over and two times three root three is six root three and then lastly what i'm going to do is divide the top and bottom by three so um three into 15 goes five times so we get five root seven, and three into six goes two. So five over two, or sorry, five root seven over two root two. I'm still not quite there yet. I need to rationalize the denominator. So I, I need to get rid of this root two underneath. And one way to get rid of that square root underneath would be to multiply the top and bottom by root two. Sorry, that shouldn't be a root two, that should be a root three. Just as well I spotted that. We would have been a whole lot of trouble. Okay, so let's try that again. I'm not going to multiply above and below by root 2. I'm going to multiply above and below by root 3. So, root 3. Okay, essentially, again, I'm just multiplying by 1 here. So, 5 root 7 times root 3. Now, remember this rule from earlier that the sort of a product equals the product of the thirds. But that means the product of the thirds equals the sort of the product. So instead of writing root seven times root three, I'm gonna write it as root seven times three, which is 21. And then over here we get two times root 9 and root 9 we know is 3 so we get 5 root 21 over 2 times 3 which is 6 so we get 5 over uh, 5 root 21 all over 6 and that's the job done okay last example here now what we're going to do is multiply above and below by something which is equivalent to 1 so that I, I make um, the square root disappear. 
and maybe you can think about this one. Um, if I do a minus b, uh, sorry, a squared minus b squared, we get a minus b times a plus b. So have a think about how this helps us do this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply above and below by 3 plus uh, root 8. 3 plus root 8. Okay. Okay, so let's do, let's do it like this. Let's write it down as 1 minus root 2, just to make it nice and clear, times 3 plus root 8. And that's divided by 3 minus root 8 times 3 plus root 8. Okay, so this is just like expanding double brackets. It's exactly like that. So 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times root 8 is root 8. Move my cup out of the way. Uh, 1 times root 8 is root 8. Um, minus root 2 times 3 is minus 3 root 2. And minus root 2 times root 8. So it's going to give me, it's going to be negative because that's minus or that's negative and that's positive. So the, when I multiply together, I'm going to get a negative answer. And root 2 times root 8 is the same as root 16. Okay, let's sort out the bottom. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times root 8 is plus 3 root 8. Minus or negative root 8 times 3 is negative 3 lots of root 8. And then negative root 8 times positive root 8 is going to be negative. Root 8 times root 8 is root 8 squared, which is essentially 8. Okay, and watch what happens here. This is where the magic happens underneath the line. Uh, let's tidy up the top. We get 3 plus um, root 8. In fact, I'm going to sort out that root 8 right now. Can I think of two numbers that multiply together to make 8? And one of them is a square number. 4 times 2 works nicely. Minus 3 root 2. Minus, and the square root of 16 is 4. Now you might say, well, the square root of 16 is also minus is also negative 4. When we're dealing with thirds, we always take the positive one. Okay, um, 9. And look what's happened here. We got 3 root 8 um, minus 3 root 8, and they cancel out. So I just get left with 9 minus 8. And that's the beauty of multiplying by um by the 3 and the root 8 would change the sign in the middle. So if that was positive, I'd make this negative. If that's negative, I make this positive. Okay? And by doing that, we will always end up with a situation like this, which means that we end up with uh, two squares, uh, which means that they're going to be, uh, it's going to get rid of the third or get rid of the square root sign. Okay. Um, right. Final stretch here. Uh, three, three plus two root two minus three root two minus four. And that's all over one. And then very last part, so tie up the top. Uh, 3 take away 4 is negative 1 and then 2 root 2 take away 3 root 2 is negative root 2. So we get negative 1, negative root 2 and that's it. Okay, hopefully you found that uh, quick recap on surge useful. Um, we'll be back again with another video soon, so all the best with the revision and I'll talk to you again sometime.